Hello, arty peoples, and welcome to another episode of Jerry's Live, the first one of the 2023 season of Jerry's Live. I'm very excited to be here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, now, today's class, before we officially jump into all the fabulous disco party things, uh, today's class is, uh, the code is JL271, which is the 271st episode of Jerry's Live. That's, that's a lot. That's, um, I can't believe we're here. It's nuts. We've been doing this for, what, seven years now? Seven years. Yeah. Seriously? Seven years. This is our seventh year, officially. Isn't that crazy? I love it. Best job ever. So, the class code being 271. Uh, JL271, if you go to the website jerrysartorama.com and in the search bar type in that class code, which is also down here uh, in case you guys want to pull that up later, uh, that will bring up the teacher's cart which has all of the stuff that I'm about to use uh, to do the project that we are going to do, which is painting disco balls, of course. Uh, so I figured what better way to start the new year than a little disco moment. I, I'm not mad about it either. A lot, lot of sparkle. And I also brought my own disco ball. Did I use this class as, as, as an excuse to buy a disco ball? Maybe. I'm not mad about it. Anywho, so I wanted to quickly go over, other than the disco ball, uh, what we're going to be using for today's class uh, to actually paint our own disco ball. Uh, first and foremost, you are going to need a round canvas. Uh, so this is our new Paramount, uh, this is the 10 inch round, and it goes from, I did not look up the smallest size, what is that? 5 inches is the smallest one? Or is it 6 inches? Can't remember, but it does go up to 20 inches of the canvas, if you guys can pull up the smallest size, I don't know. But today I'm going to be using the 10 inch because I figured that'd be a good enough size for you guys to see what we're doing, as well as uh, be able to possibly finish a whole disco ball for you guys. Uh, but I have um, two different kind of color families here that I used to paint my two different disco balls that I did in preparation for this. Uh, this is more of like the greens and yellows. Yes, we have a question? It's five. Five inches, okay. I wasn't, I wasn't wrong. I guessed five the first time. So yes, our circle canvases go down from five inches uh, round up to 20 inches. So uh, that you can do whatever size disco ball you want. I personally uh, might have to do a larger one later on. <laughs> um, but, so that's the canvas. Uh, then the, yes, acrylic paints, any acrylic paints will do. I personally love the Lucas. Uh, this is not a heavy body paint and it's not a fluid. It's kind of right in the middle, a uh, nice soft body kind of paint. Uh, but it's, it's got a good opacity to it, uh, or a good amount of pigment in the paints. So I'm not going to be struggling trying to get coverage. Uh, so like I said, I have the two different families of colors that I've already used. Um, when it comes to picking your own paint colors for your disco ball, you can use anything, which is great. Uh, but I would suggest you kind of keep it in a color family. Work on your, your color uh, kind of schemes first. So this one I kind of kept the the turquoise, there's a green, there's a couple different yellows, and I even uh, threw in the, um, I think that's called the peach pink uh, color, and then white for like a little pop of like a brightness. Uh, for this one, I had my, my blues and greens kind of a color. So I have my Arctic, which is a like nice, very pretty, like ice blue kind of color. I have cobalt, uh, there's a Viridian and then Prussian blue. So those are my blues and greens, kind of the tones that I used in there. Uh, and then I also popped in the fluorescent magenta. And this is actually the fluorescent signal red. So it's nice, bright, kind of orangey kind of color. Now, when it comes to throwing in funky colors like this with like the cooler blue tones, this is where I, you really want to kind of work on your color schemes is because anywhere where I was going to mix in this bright orange, if I were to mix it with like, say, this cobalt blue, those are opposite on the color wheel and they will make mud. So be aware of that. Um, so that's why whenever I was painting this specific disco ball, I did actually keep the oranges kind of mixed in with either the Arctic just to kind of lighten it a little bit, um, or I had it with the pinks. Uh, and then you can see I kind of popped it in just a little bit on top of the blues, but I didn't really mix it because I did not want to make mud. Um, now, you will also notice that this one 
is framed, which is lovely. So we do have our fancy new ambiance uh, round frames that go with this. Now, this one happens to be the black, and I was going to show you all the other colors. I was going to have that one framed as well. And then I realized I ordered the oval ones. So, <laughs> did not get the round ones in in time, my bad. But I did wanna show you the actual other colors. So we have it in black. Uh, this one is the two, uh, I think this is the champagne gold. Is it champagne gold? I think it's champagne gold. And then this is the other gold that they have. Um, and then there's also a white. So you guys have a lot of options as far as the frames, uh, which also, they come in ovals as well in case you wanna do a funky squished disco ball. I don't know, that's, you know, maybe. Maybe that, that would be kind of fun, you know? Uh, but uh, the black one is the one that I popped it in here. Uh, these are really, really lovely frames. They come with all the hardware for you to pop them back in there. Uh, and actually what's really cool is that you can pop it in and out. If I can actually get this to work with me here. So strong that it actually just broke my nail. <laughs> uh, that's hard to, hard to pop it out. Okay, so there's just these little uh, sliders that will uh, hold your canvas in and they're really strong. Clearly they just broke my nail. Uh, but I wanted to show you this. So this on both of these canvases, I actually did continue my painting around the edges. Uh, you don't have to do that if you are going to frame them, um, but I did want to just show you that as well. So I have uh, two different kind of styles of disco ball as well. I have this one, which as Katie said, looks like a spinning disco ball that's hanging in the, the air. And then this one, we can actually see the point where all the disco ball kind of mirrors kind of come together, the point there. Uh, and it kind of radiates out towards that, which Katie then called the disco ball that's sitting on the floor. So, makes sense, right? But I just wanted to quickly go over kind of how to do the line work for each of these. No perfectionism is needed for this. It's gonna be super easy, and if you don't get it absolutely perfect, it's okay, because it's still gonna look good. Uh, so let me get my stuff kind of out of the way here to where I can show you how to do this. And then we are going to pop this open where I can start painting on the canvas. So I also have the gray toned disposable palette paper here uh, just for me to squeeze out my acrylic paints on there. Um, I personally love the gray color because you can really see your colors. Uh, it kind of helps you see the, the vibrancy of them. Uh, but push that over to the side. Disco ball's rolling, sorry. Rogue Disco Ball. All right, now, if you wanna go over to the overhead view real quick, I wanna kinda of show you this. Okay, so we have kind of the two different styles of line work here. Um, so I'll, I'll kinda of push them off to the side and show you one and then the other. So this one, because of the Disco Ball being kind of shown straight on, without that like kind of the, the point where it kind of starts coming together, which um, this one clearly is not the exact same. Doesn't, mean, doesn't matter. If you make it up, it's okay. It'll still look like a disco ball. But because this one is more of the straight lines, this is probably the easier of the two to do. Um, so I'm gonna actually show you how to do this one today. Uh, but this one, if you're literally just drawing straight lines across, just kind of curve it down, just slightly in the middle, and then it'll look like a disco ball. So it, you know, nothing perfect. It doesn't really have to be exactly straight, but if you do kind of get it sort of straight, use a ruler and then kind of just bend it down right in the middle to where it kind of start curbsing, or curving down just a little bit, then it'll actually appear like a disco ball. Now, if you don't really want to do that and you just draw straight lines, it'll still look like a disco ball. Absolutely. But it does probably, like you can see, as it, the, the mirrors kind of go over to the side, the tiles here appear thinner. So if you actually were to do that and keep it thinner on the sides, it'll still appear perfectly fine. Uh, now, with this one, which is the one that we're gonna do, same concept. So uh, I just kind of picked a point and drew a circle. And then I started drawing circles around said circle. 
And then as I got towards the top, I made that a little bit thinner than it is down here. So like for this circle, the tiles up here are th thinner that way than it is down here. So it's a little chunkier right here than it is up here. So that just simple perspective move will get you kind of the idea of it looking like it's a ball that is turning in space. Again, if it doesn't get perfect, it's not really that big of a deal. But let's get painting. So I'm going to, like I said, do the circular one. Do we have any questions so far as I'm just gonna kind of start slapping some paint down? Awesome. So I'm going to use Prussian blue, the Thalo Viridian, and I'm gonna actually pull for my other color theory or my other color family and do the turquoise. Cause this is Jerry's live and we're obsessed with teal here. Mm -hmm. As you can tell, teals and blues, it's a good, good color. All right, so I have two brushes here. Um, this is, let me actually get this out of the corner here. Um, so this is my half inch uh, wash brush. This is a number eight shader. Essentially, uh, this is half inch width and it's a flat. Uh, this is a, essentially about a fourth of an inch wide and it's a flat. So no matter what brand of brush you're looking for, if you see that it's about a half an inch wide this way and it's a flat brush, that's gonna help you for specifically popping in those little uh, tiles that you have going on. Uh, now, I have to do, I do have to kind of match what I did here before, so. We're just going to start popping in some Prussian blue. Now, uh, this first initial layer is just to get the white of the canvas gone. I'm gonna pop it over here too. Now again, if you're gonna frame this, you don't have to worry about the edges whatsoever. Uh, or if you are going to keep it unframed, just carry the, uh, the paint along the, the sides there. So, now I will say while I'm doing this as well, I have three lovely ladies in front of me. My moderators, Amanda and Frida, who are on the, the YouTubes and the Facebook as well, talking to you guys in the chat. And then I have Katie. Now I have three colors that I already picked, right? Our very loved colors. Uh, you three get to pick one color each that I will include in this painting. Yes. Hot pink. Ice All blue. Right. Arctic. Arctic blue? Is that what it's called? Yep. So those two. One more. Thalo. I already used the Thalo. Oh. You can't see the other one. You can't see the other one. Soft yellow. The soft yellow? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Let me. Let me. The green is the two. That one. The fern? Yeah. This is fern. Burn. I do love Burn. that color. It's a good color. Okay, so those are our extra three colors. We're going to Arctic, Fluorescent Magenta, and Fern, as well as our Prussian, I did not mean to get the blue, Prussian Blue, this is the Thalo Viridian, and then Turquoise down here. So again, I am just trying to cover this canvas, and if you have a larger brush, this would be a great time to use it. Now, uh, <laughs> if you guys are using a smaller canvas, um, you might want to actually go, when it comes to the tiles, you might want to go with a smaller brush, uh, and you'll see why in just a second. But for this initial kind of layer of color, it does not matter at the size, really. We're just trying to cover that white, which it helps if I pull off a lot more paint than that. So, and I'm not really trying to blend it much. I know it's it's getting a little blended in between them. Uh, I am not that worried. This this layer mostly is going to get covered up, which is okay. And it's going to become the in-between lines, which is really fun. Uh, so right here, you can actually see um, if I tilt it just a little bit, because yes, there's glitter on this one. Don't I'll get, I'll get to the glitter here in a minute. But if you look in between those little tiles right there, uh, it's kind of more of the fluorescent magenta. Uh, that's because I popped in that color right there. 
on the first initial layer. So this is going to just become uh, kind of whatever is in the background uh, because you don't really want just white. Not that that, actually that might look cool. So, I mean, this is the cool thing is that there are no wrong answers here. All right, so just covering this up. So just make sure all of the white is covered. Now I'm doing a very quick kind of rush job here because as you can see, there's really no rhyme or reason to what I'm doing here. Uh, and I was prepared and had one ready. <laughs> so we're just gonna switch it up real fast because I know you guys love to see paint dry, but uh, we're just gonna not do that to you. So, uh, and I also have a bucket of water here for me to clean my brush, which I do love so, so much. And of course, an easy wiper just to kind of knock off the pigments here. All right, now that this is completely covered and has um, the acrylic covering the, all of the white, now is where I'm gonna take a pencil. Any pencil will do. I'm gonna actually pop this over here. Uh, any pencil will do, and we're just gonna pick a point on here, and we're gonna draw kind of a sort of ovaly circle. It's not a perfect circle. It's just gonna have a slight squish to one side, so it's a little bit of an oval. And then, like I said, we're going to keep it um, the idea is like pick a size of a tile. So for this one, I use my smaller brush and that's why my tiles are a little bit smaller on this size uh, because if you look at it, uh, it's probably about like one brush stroke would be about almost 75% of the width of my little square here. So um, for this one, all of these tend to be almost perfect squares. Uh, for this, uh, it tends to be a little bit bigger here in the middle, and then I got it smaller uh, as I went towards the edges, right? Uh, so this one, this is why I'm saying the flat brushes are gonna help you. This one is about the same kind of idea, is that it's one brush stroke and then just a little bit extra. Uh, but as you can see, I got my tiles a little bit bigger in the height here, than I did up here. Because uh, again, I want to make it look like it's in perspective. So uh, if my circle is about that big, I'm going to do a maybe, maybe it's a half inch. Now, is this something that you can actually measure out and kind of slowly take, like if your tile is an inch tall right here, you can actually take a little bit away as you go up? Yes, you could actually measure it, uh, but I'm just totally going to eyeball it because ain't, I ain't got time for that. I don't have the patience for that either. Uh, but if I have the width right here is about a half an inch, then I'm gonna put a half it on this side and just kind of connect the two with another squishy oval. Just like that, right? And then we're gonna keep going. And I'm gonna kind of eyeball it as I go. Again, if it's not perfect, it's okay. Keeping the top of it still about that same height. And then I'm probably, as I keep going further and further towards the middle, I'm gonna make this a little bit thicker. Just a touch. To where it's gonna kind of start looking a little bit like a bullseye. Hopefully that's visible. I got a little wild over here. And if you mess up, totally okay. Take an eraser, you can erase it out. Not a big deal. Also, you're gonna mostly paint over top of it, so mistakes can be hidden, which is lovely. So I would keep going all the way around. Um, let me actually get to about here. To where I can show you. So that line is almost hitting the top of it right there, top of the canvas. Uh, so essentially that's not gonna be visible if I frame it, right? Not at all. 
So if this one, I happen to not actually worry about this, the edges, I would then just kind of come up, touch that line, and then just kind of start looping it around the same way and the same thing on this side. Now, if you are going to continue it around, I just touched paint. I felt that, sorry. <laughs> Elbow and paint. Um, now, if you are going to continue it around the edges, don't touch that line. Just kind of keep it the same width as right here, but you are gonna have to start turning your canvas and start drawing it on the edge just like that, if that makes any sense. So I would keep it going like down here. If that makes sense. Hopefully that makes sense. I have a visual, this one. So you can kind of see it just starts, the circles keep going, but they're just on the edge of that canvas. And then over here, I start pulling in those lines from the edge. Now, as much as I know it's so thrilling to watch me draw lines, um, we got painting to do, so we're gonna just skip that. <laughs> uh, but here's all the lines. So as you can see, my pencil lines just kind of kept going around in that like kind of circular motion. Uh, and then it will kind of connect to each of the next line. So it gets like a, almost like a point at the top there. So now we have our three colors. I'm going to definitely be using my half inch brush because I'm gonna do a larger kind of tile on this one. But Let's move this kind of to where you can see it. How are we looking on that side camera? Is it in camera? <laughs> just so you guys can see. Okay, so I'm gonna pull it down just a little bit. I'm gonna make sure you guys can really get a good view. So let me put my next three colors on my palette. Yes. While you're doing that, could you use white chalk to make the lines on this? Yeah. I, I don't see why not. Um, now the one thing though that I do like about the pencil, uh, where's my other disco ball? There we go. All right, so let me switch this out real fast. Um, with this, uh, actually let's go over to that overhead. I can probably show you a little bit easier here. Um, so with this one, because I did not use white chalk, I didn't erase my lines and you cannot tell. Not at all, you can't see them. Uh, if you use white chalk on this as your kind of guideline, like especially if you have like more vi like vision issues and your, your eyesight's not as great and it's hard to see these tiny little lines, um, that would be something you can do. And then I would, at the very end, once you're done painting in all your lines, just take a kind of a wet rag and just gently wipe off the dust of that um, the white chalk kind of thing. And then that should mostly erase it out. Uh, just, I would be aware that it is going to be visible within all your lines. So you might, you're going to have to remove it somehow. So, good question though. And if you guys do have any more questions, please pop them in the chat as I go. Uh, because Amanda and Frida will ask me and we can definitely figure out the answer for you. Okay, so I have my disco ball and my palette colors. What color I start with does not matter, not at all. So we're gonna go with fern. We're gonna go with that one. Uh, I'm gonna start kind of right in this circular area right here. Literally just filling it in, right? Now, uh, I'm going to actually this is where having the smaller brush might come in handy if you, you are, aren't great at this. Um, so with this, I usually kind of start right in the middle and just do a little like sort of brush stroke as my first tile. And then I will just start going around and have it sort of follow. The edge of this is gonna follow around my pencil mark. Now I'm not painting the pencil mark. I'm going up to it, but kind of leaving that little space in between. Kind of like that. Almost like we're painting uh, petals on a flower without having them touch. If that makes any sense. Now the cool thing is, 
is I can continuously turn this. Don't forget that you can absolutely turn your canvas any which way instead of having to like do this with your hand. Turn your canvas. It's just going to be a lot easier to maneuver. Right? Just like that. Now, let's say I want to start changing the color. I'm going to go with this turquoise kind of color. What is it? It is actually called turquoise. Okay. So I'm going to actually mix on my canvas here, or on my uh, palette here, and I stuck my thumb in the paint. What is wrong with me this year? It's going to be that kind of a year, guys. Okay. So I have uh, that fern color already on my brush, right? And I'm just going to kind of mix it in with that turquoise. And then that very messy mixture, it is not perfectly mixed. I'm going to pop in the next little kind of uh, tile there. Again, are they perfect? No, not at all. I'm just kind of, oh, they touched. Is that going to be an issue? No, no one's going to tell. No one's going to know. No one's going to even pay attention. Now, if you actually look at this right here, I have so many little blobs that are kind of everywhere. No one notices, not at all. It's perfectly fine. But all I'm doing right now is just kind of uh, making sure to fill in the little tile section. I'm trying to get my, my sort of square shape, but it's not perfectly square shape, clearly. Because it's if, it, if you look at like a petal, it's gonna have kind of more of like it's wider on the outside than it is, and it goes a little bit a little bit more narrow. Uh, but I'm trying to keep it relatively square in in my head. So essentially, if you're looking at a square at an angle, like in perspective, it's gonna look more like a trapezoid. Now, if I keep it sort of similarly shaped, like uh, as far as like in my head, that's about the same size all the way around. Uh, as far as the width of each little tile that I put in, uh, that one's more narrow. It's okay. It's not a big deal. Uh, but when I get to something like this, where I'm going to connect the two sides, I definitely want to make sure when I'm painting in the second to last one to leave just enough space to where it looks like it's still about the same size of tile. Again, is it perfect? No. Now, because I have this mixture of color on my brush, I'm going to just pop in just a little brush stroke here, there, just to kind of connect them. We have decided on YouTube that this would also make an excellent scale application for mermaids or fancy fish. Ooh, yes it would. Oh Absolutely. Rhiannon said you should put it on a Lazy Susan. I should put it on a, who has a Lazy Susan? I would like a Lazy Susan, please. That would be, we'd have to move all the cameras. That would be a whole thing. Oh, it's a little. That's okay. It would, I think it pops it up a little higher. <laughs> all right, now, uh, say that I'm going to continue along the next line. I'm going to start, I'm going to start right in the middle again. But I'm going to go in between, kind of like I'm uh, laying bricks where you don't go directly underneath. I'm going to go kind of off and in between those two. Kind of like that if that makes any sense. I hope that does. So there's a line and that's where I'm kind of centering my brush, right? And then I'm going to kind of keep going around. And if I've noticed that I have a little bit like a, a gap that's a little bit uh, wider on this side than it is closer towards the center, I'll just fill it in. It's not a big deal. And now I can kind of start Again, following the lines of my pencil, but I'm not perfectly following it. Now, uh, when I start getting these different colors, I do want to make sure that I'm not continuously going around in circles. Uh, I'm going to kind of try to keep them in like sort of chunks. So I'm going to keep this color on my brush. And because I mixed in a little bit more of that turquoise, but it's still got a little bit of that fern in there, so it's not perfectly turquoise. But I'm going to just lay down a couple more of these tiles right underneath these. So again, just like I'm doing a brick, I'm in between these two lines, and then I'm going to kind of fill it in over here. 
and then I'm going to pop one more down here. Now the reason why I want to kind of keep these like chunks of color that match in little groups, kind of like I did with um, with this one, and I, I do it with both of them actually. Here, let me show you this. This is I think I did it a little bit better with this one. Um, whenever you're looking at this, like so, I have a chunk of light blue here. I have a the the darker blue over here, there's green, there's white, there's orange, and you can see these like chunks of color kind of within the whole disco ball, but each little section starts going out into the other one, and I just touch a little bit of the color, just like I did here, uh, let me actually make sure that's on camera, like I did here with the green. Now, the reason why I do that is because, uh, let me actually go with the overhead, yeah. Um, when you're looking at a disco ball, you can see right there, that's me. That's my crazy blue hair reflecting in that mirror. Uh, over here is a little bit more of the pink color because I have uh, this sitting right next to it. Now if I move it, that pink color also repeats down here uh, in the disco ball. So this is just reflections of whatever is around the disco ball. Now uh, that's why I'm keeping it chunks of color if you have a reflection of something kind of coming in, you're not going to just see it in a perfectly, just one line. It's going to be in a little section kind of a thing. So that's going to keep your disco ball looking a little bit more uh, understandable as a disco ball, which is why I started pulling that color down into it like a little chunk here. Do we have a question? So we got to talking about brushes and YouTube and mentioned that you could use a cat's tongue for dragon scales, for example, if you mm -hmm. wanted to do something like that. But is there a particular reason you use a flat for the disco balls instead of, say, a round? Yes. Uh, so you see the, the shape of those tiles? See the shape of my brush? I'm the, All of these right here, let me actually, I'll go to straight phthalo right here, or the, the turquoise. So as I'm laying in the tiles... That's about the same shape as my brush. So if I were to use a round, I would have to more or less draw a square and then fill it in. And that's a lot more work than me just going bloop. See? So it's just using your the right tool for the job, if that makes any sense. Just making it nice and easy. Again, is it perfect? No. But because I did change color and I went to the, the turquoise, I am going to take, and this is mostly me dry brushing, so I'm kind of getting a lot of that paint off. Uh, it's not completely dry brushing. There's still a good amount of paint. But I'm being very light in my brush stroke when I'm just popping it in over here. And I might continue that, kind of popping that, that same color on top of things. So like with this, in my little yellow section, you can see I popped the yellow on top of the green and I kind of brought it up a little bit just to kind of make it look like your, your eye connects the two and it kind of makes it look almost like you're blending but you're not actually blending. Makes it a lot easier. So I'm going to continue along with my phthalo and then maybe I'll do one more on this side. Does it matter how many you put in one little section? No, not at all. Just as long as it kind of keeps the color chunk together. But then as I start changing colors, that's when I start mixing them together. Now, let me actually, you know what? I was going, eh, yeah, I already got it on my brush. We're gonna go with the Prussian blue. And I'm gonna, cause this right up here, the background of my, my, the ball right here is a lot more of that phthalo mixed in with the turquoise. So these colors match that more or less. So I don't really want to lay that exact same color down in that section. Now you can, cause that does happen naturally in a disco ball. So it can kind of disappear with some of your tiles. Um, but I personally like to have them pop off of the, the surface. So I will, change the color and make sure that it doesn't match whatever is underneath it. So if you actually see that, I can't really see that. It's, it's there. There is a shift in color, 
but the value of that blue is so close to that phthalo behind it, I don't like it. So what I'm gonna do real quick is take some of that Arctic blue, mix it in, and just go over top of it. If you find you don't like a color that you've already laid down, totally okay. I don't even have to wait for that to dry. I don't have to mix it in perfectly because the streaks of like mixes of colors will also work for you. So again, I'm gonna take a really light, kind of almost dry brushing kind of motion and lay it in around the tiles around it. Maybe I'll keep going a little bit over here too. Why not? So now I might not mix the same color and that's why I'm only mixing just a little bit here on my palette. I might not mix the same color every time. That's okay. Getting those color variations in between them is actually what I think makes it look really, really, really interesting and cool. So as I go around the back side of this, um, I might actually, instead of continuously pulling my, br uh, my brush around just like I was this direction on the tiles, I might turn it sideways because I think it needs to get a little bit more narrow as it starts turning around, if that makes sense. Uh, so if I were to just pull a brush stroke this way, it's going to look like a perfect square, but it's not going to make sense in my head anyway. So I'm going to pop a little bit of this blue. I'm going to pop a little bit of it right in the center too. And you know what? We're going to start mixing in a little bit more of that Arctic. sense yeah yeah popping in a little bit now because that is still kind of wet it's starting to mix a little bit but it's not perfectly mixed which I love all right so let's start getting a little crazy with this funky fluorescent magenta because we all know this color is gonna make Amanda happy right yes she's all smiles love it all right You know, again, I want that color to kind of pull into some of these other tiles where it makes sense because if you're seeing a reflection of this, it's probably still going to be visible in a little bit of these other tiles, but all it is is a bunch of mirrors all put together, so. Now, the reason why I really love Lucas for this is if I paint something and I absolutely hate it, because that has happened in life, uh, I can paint completely over it <laughs> and I can erase it. All I have to do is kind of remember whatever background I put in and then sort of slap down some color. Remember, the only thing in the background that's visible are the edges. So if it's not perfectly color matched to whatever you had down there, no one's going to know. How would they know? Quick question. Yes. Ralph would like to know how we make the tiles look like glass. Ah, uh, so that uh, is a sort of different kind of a thing. Uh, so it is glass, technically speaking, uh, because it is it is just a piece of glass with the kind of whatever it is on the backside. I don't know what mirrors are technically, um, but that's what causes it to have a reflection. Now, uh, when you're painting something like this, you're not going to make it look like glass. If you're trying to paint a disco ball, and I'm like talking about like if I were to paint this and try to make it look as photorealistic as possible, uh, that I would have to suggest you probably, uh, well, first of all, you need to have it in a place where nothing's gonna touch it, and uh, includes your cats, because it's a ball, they're gonna try and swat at it. Uh, <laughs> possibly even take a photo of it, uh, and then when you do take a photo of it, really look. So like, if I'm looking at the camera right here, this down here is actually my arm reflecting into it. Um, so I would try to color match exactly what I see. And then I would take it literally square by square at that point. Um, which I have done, uh, and I have actually done a photorealistic kind of 
uh, disco ball, but it was only reflecting a bunch of lights that were shined at it. Uh, so it was actually more similar to this and kind of more fun and funky in the colors. Uh, but I was trying to replicate what I saw in the image. Um, but that's the only thing I can suggest is actually really, really taking the time and looking at each and every little square in its individuality. That, that's a lot of work, but it would look so cool though. Good question. Yes, we have another question. Is there a reason that you started the background with only three colors? Uh, no, actually, because uh, this one, I think I did three colors. It was, it, I think I mostly just used the turquoise, the yellow, and that fern color. Uh, and then this one, I think I used every single one except for the Arctic. Now, uh, I will say, if you are, if you got like a color family picked out for something like this, oh, I didn't actually use the orange either. Um, with that being the case, uh, I would keep your brighter value colors. Like if I have a white or this Arctic, I would save that for your tiles just because that's going to look like the light's hitting it. Um, now you can see here, there are some lines that I put in, um, in this one specifically. Now that's not white, that's actually the Arctic. So I never actually used white in this painting at all. The white uh, that I had, the brightest color that I had uh, in value is that Arctic. So I kept that as my, my sort of like white kind of highlight color. Uh, so that's why I popped it in a little bit here. Now I actually did not do that in this one because I was going to show you how I did that. Uh, which actually I can do that now. Uh, let me actually clean this off my brush though because I don't want to have acrylic paint dry in my brush. I'm going to pop that over there. All right, so because with this one, uh, white was my brightest color, pure titanium white. That's what I'm going to use as my little highlights along the edges. So I do actually need to pop some of that. Don't need much onto my palette here. Again, still using a flat brush. So this is where you could, if you wanted to, use a round brush. Uh, me, I am not going to. I'm going to take my brush and uh, I, like, you know how you have the flat side of the brush when it's a flat? And then when you turn it, you have a pointier brush. So I'm pulling it along that flat side and I'm loading my brush up, right? So I'm going to use this almost as a liner by just hitting it this direction. But I'm going to pull it like this. So I'm going to keep it flat against the uh, surface just like this. And you know what, here, let's, let's do this. That's, this is perfect. All right, so let me make sure this is in focus. Load my brush up to where it's nice and wet. I'm going to just do just a little bit if I don't hit perfectly center along the edges of my tiles, it's okay. Especially while it's wet, if I decide that I don't like that, I can take a little bit of water in my Easy Wiper, erase it back out. So now it's not visible at all, right? So if you decide that you don't like something, if you get to it fast enough, you can erase it back out. Now, the reason why it didn't affect any of my other tiles is because this is fully dry. So once acrylic dries, it's permanent, right? So that's one way of kind of erasing out mistakes. If you decide that you don't like something that you do. Now I'm going to keep this going now. I'm not going to go the entire length. Because remember, this is going to be kind of like a highlight hitting those tiles, just the edges of the tiles, which will happen in real life. Uh, so I'm going to just hit it from like here all the way to about here, right? Here to here. So I'm going to go down the next one, and I'm going to kind of shorten it just a little bit. And I'm going to put it slightly off center. So it's longer here than it is here, but it was here to here, and now it's here to here. And if I wanted to, I could do one more, but I'm gonna also put this off center, and I'm gonna put it over here, so it's now here to here. Right? So it's looked like, it looks like those little tiles are being hit just by the edges um, with a little bit of light kind of causing a reflection. Now I'm gonna also go 
this direction to kind of connect them. I don't have to go completely the whole way. And then, because this is the top line, I'm going to actually go up from there. And you notice I'm putting them all kind of in a line. So there's my straight lines kind of all in that area. Because odds are that's where like my brightest highlight is being hit on those tiles. So just to kind of keep it a little bit consistent. And you know what? I'm going to put a little bit more up here. And then, because I don't want that to be the only spot that I have that little highlight, I'll also put one eh, maybe down here. And I chose down here because I have a blob. And I'm going to cover that up. <laughs> We're going to just hide that like we intended it the whole time, right? And because there's a bunch of white tiles right here, it kind of makes sense that the highlight would just kind of, I'm sorry, no, uh, almost off camera there. It would make sense that the highlight's just kind of continuing up, right? So if I do the edge of that tile, it kind of blends in with that. But if I go up here, maybe over here, pull it down here a little bit. We discovered on YouTube that there is also a 16 inch Nujabi round watercolor paper available. So if you're a watercolor artist and you're not interested in acrylics, do this on that. Yes, that is something that um, with this process, if you are going to be using watercolor, I would suggest using a masking fluid for like these little highlights because that would be not impossible, but um, for me, frustrating <laughs> to try and save those highlights uh, without having to go over them uh, with watercolor. So that would be one thing that I would personally do. Mm -hmm. um, I would probably use gouache. Gouache would also be a great idea. Sorry, focusing on lines. Haha. -ha. All right, so there are my. There's my, uh, my disco ball. Now this, I would like to say, is done. Oh, it is not done. Sorry, my arm's in the way. Uh, now, I want to talk to you about glitter. Because, let's be honest, how much glitter is too much glitter? The limit does not exist. The limit does not exist is the correct answer. All right, so I have, yep, uh, let's go to the overhead. Uh, I have our Turner Acryl Gouache. Now, yes, this is technically an acrylic gouache, uh, so it has an acrylic polymer in it, so it will adhere to your acrylic surfaces. And uh, this is the from the LeMay series. Now, the l label, as I'm sure you can see, has a little bit of sparkle on it. That's because this is glitter paint. So I'm just going to pop out just a bit, just a bit. Is that, is that too much? No, it's not enough. All right, and uh, let me clean off my brush here real fast. And then this right here is clear, um, except for it is, this is the clear diamond. There's also a clear opal, which is really, really pretty. Uh, but let me actually pull this out on the palette, right? So you can see it's clear, but then it has, if I can get it to not be shiny. I, you know what? Let me actually just put it on, on my disco ball. Does it matter where I'm putting it? Not to me, because it needs to go everywhere. Uh, now, if you really wanted to, you could actually paint in individual little like glitter spots if you wanted to. I, again, don't have the time for that, and I need more glitter than that, right? So I'm not being very precise in where I'm putting it. I'm kind of using my brush and kind of zigzagging uh, along the flat way, uh, the flat side of my brush that I had loaded up with that LeMay glitter paint. And then now, it's clear that it has sparkles. Hopefully you guys can see that. I don't know if you can see that. Which would be amazing as well for mermaid scales, in case you guys are wanting to do this with the mermaid scales. Um, so let's see if I can get it to, to show up on here. It's Hopefully you guys can see the sparkle. Ooh, it's so pretty. 
All right, so I need more. It's not enough glitter. Now, you could cover the whole thing. Now, I am not covering the entirety of the surface. I'm doing it kind of in spots. So I have a spot kind of here, and then it kind of trails up and comes up here, and then it comes over here. And then I'm gonna also make sure to do a little bit of the edges. Sorry, it's hard for me to see and be on camera here. Okay, so just just enough of a little little sparkle moment. How fun is that? So good. All right, and then this I think is officially done. And there is my glitter disco ball. How are we doing on time, by the way? Because I could keep painting forever. 15 minutes? Six. Oh, six. Oh, I was like, what? <laughs> we have 15 Two minutes. Hours. <laughs> um, okay, so this is officially done. And as you can see, um, I also added the glitter on here. It does show up a little bit more on the darker colors than it does on the lighter. Uh, I mean, not that it doesn't show up. It's, it's glitter. It's going to sparkle. Um, but if you want it to really pop, you can layer in more, uh, like it's dries similarly to acrylics. So it's really fast in the, how quickly it dries. Uh, I would say most of this is probably already, it's already tacky. Um, and I have glitter on my hands now, uh, but this is going to be dry before the show even ends. Uh, so you can actually go in and layer more on top of it. Like this is a good a good amount of layers. I want to say two or three, so I really built up the, the glitter there. Um, but it does show up over the darker areas, but it is clear, so the only thing you're really painting is glitter. And the cool thing is once it cures, just like acrylics, it does not transfer on you. So um, unlike other glitter, this is the kind that stays put, which is my favorite personally. <laughs> I don't know how you guys feel about glitter, but I'm I also wearing, glitter bombs. I also have glitter boots on right now, so. <laughs> I, I feel like I wish I could show you guys. I could pull my foot up, but I don't know how flexible I am. So uh, I'm going to actually go back to this real quick so I can show you a little bit more. Uh, like if I were to, so I have, uh, this is one of those things that I was telling you about. So I have the magenta right next to a green. Magenta is more of the like the redder kind of colors. Green is the opposite on the color wheel. Now, if I start mixing those two, like the phthalo, because it leans a little bit towards that like bluish color and this is like crazy magenta, it actually does give me kind of a purpley color. It's really pretty and one of my favorite mixtures. So I know this is an okay mix because I'm familiar with that. Now that magenta and fern, I don't know what it's gonna do, but I don't think it's gonna be pleasant, but let's find out. But I'm going to mix it on my palette before I actually put it on my disco ball. And again, I stuck my finger in paint. What is wrong with me? Sorry, I got paint on everything. All right, so magenta and a little bit of this fern, which the fern leans a little bit towards like the yellow side, so it might, yeah. It's giving me almost like an orangey color. How bizarre is that? Now, if I were to mix that with a phthalo, that is mud. This is where I want to avoid. So if I know what my colors will do on my palette before I actually put it here, if I don't like that color, don't put it here. Do not do it. That is not gonna look pretty. Well, if you're trying to paint photorealistically, that might be what is, is happening. Um, but it's going to be one of those things where I would uh, take a little bit of artistic liberty and avoid the mud, personally. But um, if I do a little bit of like a dry brushing moment, I'm not mixing them. I'm just really popping that pink kind of on top of it. So I know that that green is completely dry. But if I'm popping the pink on top of it, and including over here, because it's all reflective, uh, that kind of ties that pink color in with the green without actually mixing them and making them look icky. So let me go 
back to that crazy, funky, orangey color with the pink and the fern, because I like that. I like that color mix. That's bizarre mix. Uh, and then I would probably, yep, that is gonna pop right off of that color because this being almost like a orangey kind of color and this being that blue green, again, they're opposite on the color wheel. So when you have those colors next to each other, they really pop off the canvas, which is great. And again, I'm not being perfect. Now I'm gonna put one here. You see how I left enough space for a tile? It's because I'm gonna put another one there. So if I'm keeping an eye on the spacing in between, it's gonna be more cohesive looking. And I would also pop this up here. So fun. All right, how fun is that? Love it. Now, uh, because I'm so close to the edge, I probably wouldn't have a color shift right here. I would just keep that tile kind of color going. Because having a color shift on the edge is a lot more work. It's such a fun color. Who, who does not love this color? Ugh. All right, now, since I did that one, right, this one right here, I actually realized that there's more space here. This is what I was talking about. Take your brush and just kind of fill it in just a little bit. And again, I'm going up to the pencil line, but not past it. Right, just like that. How fun. Now, you can continue along, keep going around the circle, and eventually you are gonna fill it up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, something like this, uh, again, this is the 10 inch square. It probably took me, um, I'm trying to remember how much time it, yeah, it didn't really take me that long. I would say maybe an hour of like just actively working on this, like tile after tile after tile. And I'm not talking, so it goes by a lot faster when I don't <laughs> run my mouth. Um, but I, I essentially finished two of these in no time. I mean, clearly this one took me a lot longer because the tiles were smaller, so there's more to lay in. Um, and I think I had more color shifts in this one than I did here. It doesn't appear like it because there's a lot of colors that are very similar, um, but I think I had, there's quite a few more color shifts than, than in here. Um, so I think, uh, yeah, I think this one took me about an hour. This one might have taken me about two. So all in all, a very easy painting to do uh, and definitely something that is super marketable. Right now, these are definitely trending and to the point where uh, I could pop this on my website and it would sell very quickly. So if you guys are looking to market yourself as an artist and get your artwork out there for you know being a professional artist in the industry, um, you gotta, sometimes you do have to make artwork that will sell and this is a super fun way of doing it. Um, do we have a question? This is, no, but more a comment, this is also a great way to teach color theory. Absolutely. This is a fun way, especially if you are kind of trying to figure out colors and how they do mix in with each other. Uh, this is a fun way of kind of experimenting and figuring out color families that work for you in your artwork. So you might not think that that fluorescent uh, signal red would work very well with the cobalt, but you break it up with a little bit of magenta moment and they work amazingly, right? Love it. I like how we almost picked you some primaries on accident with our little crazy You light did! <laughs> almost like a yellow, a little bit of blue, definitely a more reddish tone, but look how incredibly, incredibly, <laughs> incredibly bright that is on camera. That is insane. Look at the spectrum. And yes, they do fluoresce. So if you were to hit this mm. or this with a black light, it'll glow. Uh, I might have to do that. Actually, you know what? I am going to do that. I'm going to pop a black light on this and then I'm going to pop that image into the Jerry's Live group. So uh, make sure you join the Jerry's Live group. Um, and Katie, if you want to, I'm going to, yeah. So <laughs> um, but yes, if you want to see this glowing under black lights, 
Uh, make sure you join the Jerry's Life group on Facebook. It is free for anyone to join, and it is a community of over 6,000 artists, I think, now. is It's over 6,000. I don't think we've quite hit the 7,000 mark, but we're get de definitely getting closer. Um, but I will pop the image of this into that group chat. And now make sure if you do try to join, uh, just answer the one security question because you will be deemed a robot if you do not. And then I will tell you, you cannot join until you answer that question. So, sorry. Uh, but uh, I am going to almost break the camera. Sorry. Katie, you jinxed me earlier. This is Butter fingers. <laughs> Sorry. It's fine. It's a frame. They're very durable. It's actually quite, it, yeah, it's fine. Um, anywho, I'm going to go pop this on my wall uh, after hitting it with a black light as well. So, <laughs> I have my own disco ball. I have a lot of disco moments happening. Uh, but that was the class. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Of course, if you are watching this in the future and you have more questions for me, pop them in the chats or the uh, commentary below. I always try to keep an eye on them and see if you guys have any more additional questions. And of course, make sure you join me next week because I'm going to be doing a image transfer class where we actually transfer uh, printed images with just acrylic paint. We're not using any mediums, but I'm gonna go over how to do that and all the little like ins and outs of how to, to troubleshoot that kind of a process and it's really fun. So I hope to see you then. Happy New Year and I will see you guys. Bye, 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 bye.